Hello, my name is Antoinette Warren and this is Tides TV. Today's guest is Lex Vanderplu of Rhythm Pharmaceuticals. Hi Lex, how are you? Hi Antoinette, doing okay, how are you? Great. My first question for you today is, what are rare genetic disorders of obesity? I um, appreciate the opportunity to have a discussion, Antoinette. Um, obesity is best seen as an increase in fat mass in an individual. And it can be influenced by both genetic and environmental factors. Now, in the rare genetic disorders of obesity, there are selected uh, underpinnings, genetic uh, deficiencies that have occurred that lead to uh, severe obesity. And there are examples uh, uh, of patients that have been identified, for instance, with leptin receptor deficiency, pardo willi syndrome, pardo beetle syndrome, Alstrom's disease, that fit that paradigm of the rare genetic disorders of obesity. Um, currently, there aren't that many patients identified uh, worldwide or in the United States, and it is a largely underserved population where there is a tremendous medical need. And what is the biological basis for rare genetic disorders of obesity? So, at Rhythm, we focus on a unique part of the causes for rare genetic disorders of obesity, where we have a receptor, the melanocortin-4 receptor. And the best way to compare this is that if you consider the melanocortin-4 receptor, the city, that has, diff has different roads going into it, by the time that any of those roads are defective, the traffic into the city is impaired. And essentially what happens in rare genetic disorders of obesity is there can be defects that almost are like roadblocks. And what Widom does is it has a neuropeptide based on which it can overcome those roadblocks and thereby restore the melanocortin-4 receptor functioning. The end result of that is that there is a control of appetite, which is uh, uh, severe and unrelenting in individuals with these rare genetic disorders of obesity, and thereby can lead to a normalization of body weight. Um, there are quite a few different genetic uh, mutations, different uh, roads in the uh, pathway to the MC4 city that can be disrupted, mm -hmm. and we're evaluating those. And how many individuals have rare genetic disorders of obesity? So the uh, exact number of patients identified in the United States is very limited. So it's a very early stage. We predict that there are roughly 500 patients with POMC deficiency. Mm -hmm. There are probably between 1,000 and 2,000 leptin receptor deficient patients, 1,500 to 2,500 Bardot Beetle syndrome patients, and 1,000 patients with Alstrom's disease. So that is an initial outline of patients with deficiencies that come out of clinical studies and uh, selected uh, registries. We've done an extensive epidemiological study where we predict in the United States that there are probably roughly 12,000 individuals that have deficiencies in the three genes that Rhythm focuses on, POPC, leptin receptor, and PCSK1. So that provides a patient population. It's important to realize that the majority of those patients have not been diagnosed, have not been identified, mm -hmm. there are no treatment regimens, and the treatment need is profound for these individuals. And what are the clinical manifestations of rare genetic disorders of obesity? So, the important part of these rare genetic disorders of obesity is that the patients that suffer from these have unrelenting hunger. Um, they have a drive to appetite, to eat, that uh, can take caregivers to lock up food, to close cabinets. And I often compare this to the notion that there are some misconceptions about obesity. Many individuals say it's a disease of willpower. You just you eat too much. They say, you're absolutely right. Now do me a favor and hold your breath for five minutes and tell me how your willpower is doing. And then people often answer, I cannot do that. My only response to that is, for these children it's the same. Not eating is like not breathing. And hence it is an unrelenting drive for access to food that we're trying to correct with the therapeutics that Venom is developing. So please tell me, what are some key challenges in oligonucleotide and peptide drug development and what is Rhythm Pharmaceutical doing to adjust, address these challenges? So the field is currently underdeveloped, so we have fantastic opportunities to make progress. I always compare it to us standing at the foothills of really tall mountains and we've got to make it to the top. So working with regulatory agencies to uh, develop the capabilities to understand the disease better through the development of registries and to the development of capabilities that allow that is very, very important. So Rhythm is spending a significant amount of time on uh, the uh, enablement of registries based on which one can learn about the natural patient history, also the caregiver history, so we know where to identify patients and where to look for patients. Mm -hmm. Those are really critical components. In addition, as it is early days, and we currently have several genes that we have identified in this pathway to the MC4 city, 
we're applying artificial intelligence to further understand how broad that pool of genes is that we need to evaluate in order to identify those patients that will optimally benefit from BIDM's peptide replacement therapies. And what are drug development companies doing to differentiate themselves um, in the new therapeutics that they're developing from what's already on the market? Very good question. Um, there are, uh, within the field that we are developing, very few treatment opportunities today. Um, the main uh, therapeutics that have been applied is either diet, exercise, and at times bariatric surgery. And these are not very effective in the patient population we are pursuing. Widom has received breakthrough designation and orphan designation for the POMC deficiency and the leptor receptor deficiency. And those are routes by which we can, of course, move the uh, drug discovery efforts forward at a, at a high pace. So currently, these pathways are being further pursued. And what drug development companies are doing is learn from the uh, progress that has been made and thereby look for novel therapeutics that may be able to make inroads. What are new drug therapeutic modalities do you expect to see emerging in the near future? So from the work that has been done to date, um, mimicking an existing neuropeptide and thereby working, coming up as a neuropeptide replacement therapy, we anticipate that there will be novel opportunities as this pathway becomes further and better understood. So we anticipate that there will be opportunities for uh, 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 compounds uh, like the uh, drug submelanotide that uh, Widom is developing uh, that will find inroads in other aspects of this uh, pathway where we anticipate many uh, different opportunities. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your insights. Thank you. Again, this is Tides TV, and thanks for watching.